This video is brought to you by patreon.com backslash sip to tally. Join the Patreon for exclusive vids, early release vids, on screen shout outs, access to members only giveaways, and added monthly tally points. Hop on over to patreon.com backslash sip to tally to see which one of the four tiers fits for you. Now let's get started. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Coach Evans. And today on Sip the Tally Films, we're going to take a look at our newest right tackle or potential starting right tackle or in the right tackle competition, competition uh, Roger Rosen Garden. And last night on the episode when we were doing the, the draft show, I kept mispronouncing his name. I threw Roger Rosenthal, Roger Rosen. I I did everything but his right, right, his right, right name. But it's Roger Rosen Garden. And so um, let's talk about his measurables and what the experts had to say about him. And then we'll show a couple of plays of him from the Michigan game, since that was the toughest game. And the experts say that was his worst game. And we'll look at how he was good and bad in that game. And we'll kind of get a general idea of what we got out of um, Rosen Garden. All right. So first up, obviously from the University of Washington, he was Mike Penix's um, right tackle which is kind of sort of his blind side, so to speak, because Penix was left-handed. Uh, 6'5", 308, he ran the fastest 40 for o lineman at the Combine. That don't really mean nothing because O-line 40s, is, they're not going to run 40 yards in the game. Uh, 6.15 prospect grade, meaning a good backup, potential to develop as a starter. But with us, he might have to be the starter from the jump. But we'll see. He's going to be thrown into a competition with um, – Falele and some other guys, and we'll see what happens. He was the second round pick, pick number 34s. Uh, but let's kind of get into it. Arm length, uh, 33 and one half, hand size nine and five eighths, and again, 6'5, 308. Again, these are combine numbers, 492. Again, like I said, fastest 40 for old lineman at the combine, but that doesn't really matter. Didn't bend, didn't bench press, didn't do the three cone at the um combine. As for some of his notes, and this stuff is coming from NFL.com. You guys can look look this up yourself and see it if you don't want to take my word for it, but it, it's on the NFL.com website. Up under, uh, you go to Combine and you go to Testing Results, and this stuff is up there. Uh, 2020, he played one game as a reserve. 2021, redshirted, played in four games. And if you don't know in college, if you play less than four games, four games or less, you can still redshirt. 2022, uh, started all 13 games as a right tackle as the blind side protector for left-handed Michael Penix Jr., which I just stated. And then 2023, he was an honorable mention, all Pac-12 conference. Uh, won, the team won the Joe Moore Award given to the nation's top offensive line, and he started all 15 games at right tackle. And part of the reason why they won that award is because of him and Troy Fotnu, who was drafted by the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, this is the overview given the strengths and the weaknesses for uh, Roger. Two-year starter uh, with long legs and a physical demeanor with a limit, limited athletic profile. Uh, Rosengarten is a smart is smart and uses all the tricks in his bag to make up for his lack of fluidity. His ability to protect his quarterback and five-man protections helped bring the Huskies the Joe Moore Award, and that's the award for the whole team O-line. Um, but he might be too slow-footed to stay in front of NFL rushers. Now, it's crazy how they say he's too slow-footed, but he ran the fastest combine. I mean, he ran the fastest 40 at the combine. But that slow-footedness is referring to his ability to go left, right, and stuff like that. That's what that kind of refers to. His He's below average as a bender and still needs work on his hand placement. But a move inside to guard gives him a better shot at making the roster as a mauler on the physical front. So now, with that being said, he could be in the competition at right tackle, or he could be in the competition at left guard. With that being said, if what they say is true, Right, let's go into their strengths. Uh, he varies his pass protection approach to keep the rushers guessing. Loads up with a meaningful first punch to set the tone. Collect the consistent wins with jump setting. Wind jump setting the rusher. Good initial pop. Uh, fitting up his run block and looks to fit. I'm sorry, looks to run his feet and finish aggressively once he's connected. His weaknesses, and this is again, this is still from the NFL.com. 
I uh, had his worst game of the season against Michigan in the college football playoff national championship game. And that's the game we're going to take a look at uh, some clips a little bit later on. Uh, below average knee bend and overall athleticism as a tackle. Struggles badly to stay mirrored at, at the top of the rush. Needs to be more focused on keeping his hands inside in both phases. And has trouble climbing to the mic backer and adjusting to movement. And again, we're going to take a look at all that stuff when we get to the film here shortly. This came from the Draft Network. And I, kind of, I tend to kind of take their stuff over a lot of other people's um, stuff because they do a little bit more research and they actually tell you which games they watch to, to give you their opinion. It says, Rodgers is an experienced offensive tackle who has started the past two seasons for the Huskies at right tackle. Uh, Rosengarten emerged as one of the better pass protectors in the country, helping create one of the best offense. I'm sorry, helping create one of the best offenses in college football. A long and lean offensive tackle, Rosengarten plays with a very good overall athleticism and movement skills. And in the passing game, and this is what I like about the Draft Network too, they give you pros and cons in the passing game, and then they turn around and give you pros and cons in the run game also. In the passing game, Rosengarten displays good quickness out of his stance and has excellent punch time and emplacement to shock pass rushers. And that's the same thing that NFL.com says. So when you see both uh, sites kind of say the same thing, that means there's some, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's some truth to what they're seeing. It's two different entities seeing some of the, th the same thing. So there's some, some, some truth to it. Uh, he has excellent foot quickness and coordination to get depth in his pass sets and mirror and pass protection. Now you're starting to see some discrepancies. NFL Network says he, he don't mirror very good. Draft Network says he does mirror very good. So now this is when you got to try to look at the tape and see for yourself which one, which one he does. Uh, he flashes good hand strength to control and latch onto the defender when connected. Uh, once he connect, once he connects, oftentimes the rep is over. Rosengardner has just an average anchor, and he lacks sand in his pants. <laughs> I know him to say bricks in his pockets, but they got sand in his pants to sit on bull rushers who attack him down the middle. He oftentimes is over aggressive in his pass sets and will overset, allowing a path inside to the quarterback. Now, I think I have a clip of that where he oversets and a guy from Michigan stops his outside rush and plants and goes inside and he can't really adjust to come back inside on it. I think I got one of those on the clip because I, I tried to pull a good and bad clip so you can see the good and bad on Rosenthal. But let's see the next thing they talk about his, in the run game. All right, in the run game, Rosen Gardens, Rosen Gardens' athleticism and mobility are a huge plus, and he can easily get outside on wide zone runs and screens. And again, I, if you've been here with me, I talk about I think we're moving toward outside zone, inside zone type stuff. And if we are moving toward that, I think he's a good fit for that. I really do. He works very well to the second level. Now, contradictory again, NFL Network said he can't get to second level. Draft Network said he can. That's why you got to kind of do your own research and watch the tape for yourself and see can he or can he not. Uh, he lacks the power to initiate good movement at the point of attack and will off the time pop, of it, pop out of his stands, resulting in him playing too high or losing leverage on the defender. Now, I did see that because, again, he don't have a lot of bricks in his pocket because he's 6'5", 308. So he looks more like a, a basketball player at times. Uh, overall, Rosengarten projects as a zone-based right tackle. Again, I love that part about it because I, you know, I'm gonna keep repeating it. I think we're moving toward that. Derrick Henry is a zone-based runner. Uh, we drafted Rasheen Ali, who was a zone-based runner out of uh, Marshall. Uh, we saw how good Keith Mitchell is running outside and inside zone, and even Justice Hill, when he started to have some kind of success running the ball, it's with zone stuff. So the trend to me is to get people that fits your scheme. And we seem to have, we seem to have more success with zone stuff. Now I'm not saying don't have counter and power and gap stuff in your, in your offense, because you need that to counter, counter some zone stuff that you need to have that. But if you, if zone is going to be your bread and butter, you need to have guys that can do it. Uh, and to finish it off, it says, uh, but he must continue to add strength. And that's, we know that because he's 308 uh, and mass to his lower half to ever be consistent starter, to ever be a consistent starter in the NFL. Uh, he was projected to be the 10th best tackle in the um, draft. And this is from uh, Dane Brugler. And I read this on on, um, 
on the stream last night, so I won't read it. I'll just show it real quick before we get into the tape. And this was his strengths from The Beast from Dane Brugler. You can pause that and clip it if you want to. Because I know everybody don't have the athletics, so that's why I'm kind of putting it up there right there. Kind of built like a basketball player, and they said he had basketball in his background. Weakness right here, high-hipped with narrow base frame. Again, you can pause and clip that. I'm just giving y'all, you know, since I got access to it, I'm trying to share it with you guys. And I, this is the part I definitely read on, on film. I mean, I read this on camera yesterday. All right. But let's kind of get into those clips I talked about. All right, we're back. Here, and here's the film portion of it right here. Rosen Gardner. Gardner is right here. Let's take a look at it. I think we got one, two, three. We got six plays we're going to check out. Six plays we're going to check out. And you got that inside move that I mentioned earlier. Number 32 from Michigan. He goes to quick setting. He just can't set his foot in the can't set his foot in the ground quick enough to, to counteract that inside move. Again, I'm gonna show you good and bad now. I'm gonna show you good and bad on this tape. So you don't so everybody don't think it's all, you know, all hunky dory and we got the best thing since sliced bread. We don't. We got a good player, but not the best thing since sliced bread. He got stuff to work on just like just like everybody else. So this was mentioned in the scouting report. That quick set, and he just gave up the inside on that. So this is stuff he got to work on. Is you know the um old line coach, he got his work cut out for him. Joe D and I talked about Joe D in a video early in this week. He gotta he gotta teach guys, gotta develop guys. He just gotta do his job. Next play. Good job right here. Good job with his, with his kick steps. Gets to the top real quick. Get depth. Width and depth on his kick slides. Width and depth. Hands in the holster. Hands in the holster. Don't shoot him too early. Hand placement needs to be better. Like this hand on the outside. Let me blow it up a little bit. See if I can. Right there. So the hand, them hands need to be inside. You see him trying to adjust that hand inside right there? It's outside there. He's trying to adjust it inside. Trying. He's trying to adjust it inside. Trying. But then, let me get it off screen now. Now he just sits down and anchors. See, he stops He stops the bull rush. Now, this, you know, they had the saying where he don't have enough sand in his pocket. But he had enough right there to stop the bull rush. Finally got his hands in the right spot right there. And he stopped the bull rush, finally. So that's a good job of adjusting throughout this throughout this uh, pass rush rep. Hands outside when they need to be inside. Trying to fix the hands. Trying to fix the hands. Finally gets the hands fixed. Now he drops his butt. Stops the bull rush. So that's a good rep right there. That's a good rep. And again, this is, you know, they kind of got dominated this game versus Michigan. So that's why I wanted to watch this game to see the good and the bad and show you guys the good and the bad. Another good rep. Another good rep of hand fighting. Now he don't finish the play. But another good rep with the hand fighting. There's another good rep with the feet. Bam. Bam. Look at that. That, that posture right there is pretty good. That's pretty good posture. That's pretty good posture. Long arms not allowing the defender to get up on them. Now, I don't like the crossover right there. I don't like the crossover. That part I don't like. That part I don't like. But because he got the long arms, that kind of kept the defender off. That initial punch, that got the defender off. Now, at this point, he kind of beat because of the crossover, because he off balance. Look at the defender take that left arm and throw it out the way. Right there. Now he's off balance, and the defender can kind of go about his business because Penix stepped up. Had the defender still been taking this route, he would have been good. But the fact that he's throwing that on by and finna come here, he's kind of beat because of Penix stepping up. 
So depending on where the quarterback is, he got to stay balanced. And because we got a mobile quarterback as well, he got to stay balanced because he don't know where the quarterback going to be. So he can't anticipate that he's going to continue on this route because ain't no telling where Lamar going to be at. Or even if it ain't Lamar, any of our quarterbacks going to be mobile. So you got to stay balanced. You have to. Let's go to our next one. Since we flipped right here, let me, he's on the right side right here. He's right here now. I love the club and the finish. He's going to take this linebacker and club him and just run, wash him down. Just wash him down. I love that. Now, obviously, he didn't finish him because this is the guy right here. <laughs> this is the same guy. You got you got to finish your food. You can't let it get halfway down and throw it back up. You got to finish your food. I love the initial part of it, but you got to finish your food. Because, look, this man gets back in and try to get in on the tackle. So, initially, the, the play's good. Take your guy. He walked down in the gap that you got because it's some kind of it's pin and pull. So, you got anything in the in the B gap. He walked down in the B gap. Great job of finishing. Head in the right spot. Feet movement. Finish it, but you just got to finish it. And I understand that, you know, you may have gotten knocked off right here. Got to work to finish it, though. So, that's just a little sample as far as the film of what you're going to get from Roger Rosengarden, our newest uh, offensive lineman. Uh, I think great pickup. Kingsley was there, but I don't think we went wrong with Ro Rosengarden. And we'll see how the competition pans out, man. So that's our newest Baltimore Raven, Roger Rosengarden. This is Coach Evans with another episode of Sip the Tally Films. And the draft is still going on. We got another pick coming up shortly. And I hope you like the film. Um, share it if you have not done so. And I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love.